Welcome to the Level 1 Financial Reporting and Analysis Summary Video Series. This video is a summary of the reading on Financial Reporting Quality, Red Flags and Accounting Warning Signs. What do we mean by high financial reporting quality? So this is where financial reports fairly represent economic reality. So just as a clarification, when we say high reporting quality, we don't mean high earnings. What we mean is that the information being presented is of high quality. High quality information means that the information is telling you about what's actually going on. Now, companies might have incentives to overstate or understate earnings. Incentives to overstate might be as follows. Meet analyst expectations, meet debt covenants, or to improve incentive compensation. Incentives to understate include the following. Obtain trade relief, which means get discounts, negotiate lower payments to counterparties, or negotiate concessions from unions. Activities leading to low financial reporting quality include the following. Selecting alternatives which bias or distort reported results. For example, inappropriate depreciation method. So a company that should be using straight line depreciation uses units of production depreciation inappropriately. So that would be an example. Using loopholes in accounting principles. For example, in US CAP, a lease can be or should be shown as a capital lease if the payments are 90% of fair value. And just to keep it as an operating lease, you set things up so the number is 89% of fair value. Setting unrealistic estimates or assumptions. So to save your depreciation cost, you use a depreciation life that is unreasonably long. Stretching accounting principles to achieve desired outcomes. So all these are reasons that can lead to low financial reporting quality. There is a question in the curriculum that talks about fraudulent reporting. When there is fraudulent, fraudulent reporting, then we don't have low quality, we have no quality. So there, you know, this is an important, it was a trick question, I thought. But when there is fraud, then we are even, not even at low quality, it is zero quality. This is called the fraud triangle and it shows you that if three things exist, then the probability of fraud is very high. So what are those three things? Incentives and pressures which lead to fraudulent financial reporting such as a pressure to meet debt covenants or analyst earnings expectations. Next is rationalization. So individuals might rationalize their activities such as a desire to get a company through a difficult time after which they plan to undo their accounting games. And the third is the opportunity to commit fraud such as poor internal controls. When all these three exist, then the chances of fraud are relatively high. So you as an analyst need to look out for whether these three conditions hold true. Analysts should look out for risk factors for each of the conditions of the fraud triangle. These risk factors serve as red flags. And the major risk factors are summarized here. These are given in detail in the exhibits in the curriculum. I've just picked some that I think are most important. Under incentives and pressures, the risk factors are the following. A company has financial instability. There is excessive pressure from directors or management to meet financial targets. There is some personal financial situation of directors and senior managers threatened by the entity's financial performance. Under opportunities, we have the nature of the entity's operations. So if entities are heavily intertwined, lots of relationships between entities within a large corporation, that makes it easier to commit fraud. Ineffective monitoring of management. So this is related to weak internal controls, complex or unstable organizational structure where responsibilities are not very clearly defined. This is where there are opportunities to commit fraud. Attitudes or rationalization, ineffective communication, implementation or enforcement of ethical values and standards, non-financial management, successive participation and selection of accounting principles, known history of violation of laws and regulations, management using inappropriate means to reduce taxes. 
improper accounting practices. Now, you as an analyst need to figure out whether a company is doing this. So, what are the sorts of things companies might do? Improper revenue recognition. So, if a company is reporting revenue in advance, in other words, the revenue should not yet be recognized, but it is being recognized. Maybe a company is doing credit sales where it is not sure of collecting money, but it still books the revenue. That's an issue. Fictitious revenue. This is clearly cheating. Inappropriate valuation of revenue. So these all fall under improper revenue recognition. Improper expense recognition. A company should really be expensing, but it capitalizes. So there it is trying to reduce its expenses. Overstating inventory. Understating bad debts. So these are all ways of manipulating expenses. Improper accounting in connection with business combinations. This you will study at level two. Other accounting and reporting issues might not give full disclosures and so on. These are warning signs that I want you to read. They are taken from the curriculum. So with aggressive revenue recognition, if a company bills the customer but holds the inventory, that's called bill and hold. Sales type leases. When a company does a sales type lease, it is essentially selling the asset. Maybe it is doing so to show higher revenue. Recording revenue before fulfilling contract terms. So ideally a company should fulfill the term and then book revenue. Before that it should be unearned revenue if it has received the money. All right. And you can read the rest. If operating cash flow is much higher over several years or different. So out of line with reported earnings. So if your reported earnings are going up like this, but operating cash flows are flat, then that's an issue. The rest of these items you can read. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your